Oh, this is for you, bud. Whoo! What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Nate here, Go Karts Gone Fishing. And uh, in today's video, I'm going to be doing something for one of my subscribers named Saul. He has been asking me to build him an intake for his five horse Briggs. He's trying to bring back to life. He has a 22 millimeter Makuni he wants to put on it. As you guys know, I build my own intakes. They're they're hard to they're kind of hard to build, but they're worth it if you want to do your own kind of work like this. You know what I mean? This one here's got a big old kick in it to get that old 32 millimeter out. That's an eight horse Briggs. And that's my five horse Raptor engine with a 22 millimeter on it. And this is what his looks like now. I'm gonna show you guys how I did that. Stay tuned, hit the like button, subscribe. Thanks for watching. I got me a five horse Briggs, which is what he has. This is your intake. All right, this is one of my older motors that I blew up. And what we're gonna do, I got me some three quarter inch inside diameter fender washers. We're gonna drill out some holes in the correct place. And then I have this little Makuni, not a Makuni. And we're gonna try to get the holes in the right place for that. Now these holes will be on the edge of this washer, which you'll see, but it will still work. I have made three of these and all of them work great. So, and this will pretty much work on any, literally any little small engine that you wanna put a different kind of carb on if you wanna make an intake like this. So I got my two washers here and then I have a piece of pipe that I found that I had previously bent a 90 in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably cut out a three inch chunk in here where it is that three inches is about as far as you want it to be away. So we're gonna do a little kick so it'll get his mini bike motor going. And the reason we do this is because like on this bike here, this one's more straight, but this one here, I did more of a kick to it. That's a 32 millimeter Makuni on an eight horsepower. So I made that intake, I made that intake and they both work great. So Saul saw this and he wants me to make him one and that's what we're gonna do. So first thing I'm gonna do is make some measurements with my uh, caliper, whatever you call it, caliper, and uh, mark these holes and get them drilled out for us, for my man Saul. Are you kidding me? So, center to center, we have 33 millimeters. So now we're gonna put that on our washer. Let's make some marks. Finally, get to try out my new drill press my buddy gave me. Central Machinery. Much better than that old vintage one I had. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Let's see how this thing works. Like a glove. All right, folks, so this is the, hard, the hardest part here. I got, <clears throat> I believe this is a knockoff brand 22 millimeter Makuni, and I'm worried about this because I'm not sure which carb he has, but every carb I've done like this, I've always had to put the holes on the very outside of the, wa of the washer, and they hold, like it's not a problem. But I just hope I have them in the actual right place. As you can see, the holes are a little off center to the top of the carburetor. So I've got these holes marked here. I'm gonna try to get them. You can either cut these out or drill them out. I'll, I'm gonna try and drill them out just to make prettier holes. So I'm gonna get on that. All right guys, so I've got this piece now for the carb cut out and it is very tight, but that's how I want these holes to be. Um, it's obvious they're not going through the whole washer, you know what I mean? But I've never had a problem with using the outside edges like this. Um, 
it will hold in other words if you have a problem just put some loctite on it but uh yeah so these washers also have a very flat side and then kind of a beveled edge side i always use the flat side up against the carb and up against the block use the flat side so now we have our two washers we need our piece of pipe to go in between the two i have that right over here i'm gonna cut me a little piece out of this get back to you i got my piece of pipe here got some bend in it you know kick it out to the side but the problem you are you, everyone is going to come across there's no other way around this as you can see the pipe is hitting the bolts on both sides right what we're going to have to do is crimp this down a little bit in the direction we want it to be it is going to oblong this hole a little bit but you can port match this and this with a dremel once you got everything finished, you can just port match the hole to the inside of your motor to the flange and the pipe. You just grind, you just grind it out with a Dremel tool until it matches perfectly. It can work. It's a lot of work, but yeah, I'd probably recommend anyone just going and buying one of these online. Uh, a lot easier. But so I'm going to crimp this pipe now so that we can get to those bolts. All right guys, so I actually had to take these bolts out that I originally had in here, and this is something I totally forgot about. These bolts ain't gonna work because there's just not enough room between the hole and the hole and the hole for you to spin that bolt. So what I got here is some Allen wrenches, and I'm gonna send these with the intake so Saul has a way to get it on his, on his uh, motor. These are just quarter 20s. I'm pretty sure they're just quarter 20 standard coarse thread. Uh, about half inch long so he's got bolts now and this will fit in here beautifully now after kinking it a little kink I, I, it fits perfectly now so what I'm gonna do now is take my washer and and bolt this to my carburetor and then I'll show you what we'll do next all right so here's another tip uh, as you can see we're pretty close to our exhaust here and where our flange is going to mount up we're going to have to make clearance on this so if you want you can draw you a nice pretty line on there to make it look like a real flange so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and grind and cut all this off and grind and cut all this off just to make it look pretty and clearance for the exhaust after a little bit of work there with that cutting wheel this is what you come up with so now i'm gonna stick her on the bench grinder and make her look pretty Okay. When you're done with that, it should look something like this. Pretty impressive, huh? I don't care if you think it's impressive or not. I think it's impressive. What about you, Sue? Totally impressed. All right, let's get this back on the motor. I have the washer on the back of the uh, carpetrator. I'm gonna get that back up there. We're gonna put this piece on there and we're gonna tack everything nice and level. All right, so I got my piece of pipe tacked on there. Let's see. So now I'm gonna take it off. Well, actually, no. I think I'm gonna go ahead and tack that like so. Make sure it's nice and level, and then take it off and fully weld it.
foot on fire. Ow. <laughs> Ladies, get on fire. I'm on fire. It's perfect. Another day in Florida. welding on this thing you might warp these washers so what you need to do is i got this it's got sticky on the bottom of it i don't know what it's for but get you some flat sandpaper and make sure you flatten that surface out or it will not sit flush on your block so just make sure i'll spare you the sound but you know just sit there and sand on it and you can see your high spots and your low spots as you're doing it so as you can see i got a little high spot right here looks like so I'm gonna sand on that for a while and get it nice and flat and then we're gonna move on to some of the finer final things we need to do to finish this thing up quick note too when you do this you need to make sure you clean out the inside of this pipe really good you're gonna have splatter and all kinds of stuff in there and you don't want that running through your engine so make sure you clean all that out so I'm gonna go ahead and get to flattening out these flanges and we'll get on to the, the one of the last steps before it's done. Ugh. All right, guys, so I know what you're thinking. You know, this thing is ugly, right? It's ugly. It's not painted yet, of course, but you got all these nasty uh, go-karts going fishing welds on here. And I mean, don't nobody want to see that junk. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. All right, get you some JB Weld. I did the same thing with both of my other intake builds I'm gonna show you how to make it look pretty I pretty much use this stuff like Bondo I guess you would say but it's it's important actually to put this on your intake and I'll tell you why because it, it will stop any leaks that are if you have a pinhole in your welds this will this will seal it up right so Mix me up some JB Weld here, and I hope this, I hope my big nose ain't in the middle of the damn camera because that would be embarrassing. But I'll mix me up some JB Weld here, and I have already cleaned the surface really good on there. And uh, start globbing it on. I use my finger. Now, you got, you can't put nothing around the actual motor bolt holes because you will not have room for your bolts. So you see I stopped right there, but I'll put some, some JB Weld on the inside if I have to. Because I welded all around the inside too. I didn't just weld. I'll tell you what, you probably can shove a little bit in there, but don't glob it up. Just seal the, seal the crack there and that'll, oh boy, I made a mess. And that'll take care of any air leak problems you might have but now I'm gonna show you my trick so it still looks pretty rough right what you want to do is make sure you got JB weld all over your finger put a little spit on there and the spit will actually smooth it out or the wetness will I guess you would say and that'll make it look prettier won't take all the lumps out of it for the most part okay and the wetter your finger is the better but there's the bottom now up here you can clob it on you can glob it on there pretty thick because the Makuni 22 millimeter carb 
has a wider bolt pattern than what the bread uh, Briggs block does so you can put it on here pretty thick make sure you're getting it in all them little cracks and stuff and make sure you're covering up all those ugly welds now if you're an expert welder you might not have to do this step honestly but me I am no expert welder but as you can see it makes it look pretty clean my finger here and also if you want because I've done this also if you take this bad boy and throw it in the oven don't tell the wife for about 15 minutes it'll dry this JB weld up good it'll dry it right up fast if you're in a hurry Saul, Johnny is volunteering his services to help you out, bro. He's shoveling out that inside and make it look pretty. Do it up, Johnny. Service working on the big golf cart, putting brakes on it. Yeah. Good morning, guys. It's the next day, and uh, all I got left to do here is put some primer on it and some good spray paint and I can ship this off to Saul. Start off with a little bit of primer. All right, brother, this one's for you, man. Saul, it's going out. It's all done. We uh, built that intake. I hope you guys liked the video. Um, thank you to all my subscribers. I'm doing this for one of my subscribers, one of my supporters. Um, I, you know how it is. I love every single one of you guys, so. We'll get you that thing built for you, man. Get it out to you as soon as possible. I would like to thank you all again for watching and uh, please hit that like button for me. We'll see you in the next video.